It seems sort of unusual, but for the most part, when multiplying decimals uh, throughout most of the steps, we actually just want to ignore those decimals until the very end of the problem. Uh, in this example, we're multiplying two decimals, so the first thing I want to do is give myself a little bit more room here. Uh, we have 8, 0 0.7, 0 0.75. And the first thing you notice is that the decimals are not lined up. So this is not like addition and subtraction where we want to line up the decimals. We just want to line up the digits. So along the right hand side we have our digits lined up and then for almost the entirety of the rest of the problem we're going to try our best to completely overlook those decimals. Uh, so if those decimals were not there the first thing that we would do is on the bottom take that digit furthest to the right and I want to multiply everything in the top by that 5 so going from right to left uh, I would first multiply the 5 times the 7 and get 35 now below the 5 is where I want to start uh, even though I got 35 there's only room for one digit so I put the 5 and carry the 3 and then I keep moving to the next digit. I just did 5 times 7, next I do 5 times 0, which is 0, but I have to add that 3 that I carried at the top, so I now get 3. That 3 goes in the next space over, and I keep the process going. I've done 5 times 7, 5 times 0, next I want to do 5 times 8, that gives me 40, since it's the last one I need to multiply, I can put both the 0 and the 4 down there. I have multiplied everything in the top by the 5. Now, notice that in doing so, I did not consider those decimals at all. And now I just want to move over to the next digit, which is the 7. And I want to multiply everything in the top by the 7, and as I do so, I'm going to start lining them up below that 7. So that 7 times 7, that's my starting point. That's 49. I only have room for one digit at the bottom, so I put the 9 and carry the 4 over and multiply the next digit, 7 times 0. That gives me 0, but when I add the 4 that I carried, I get 4. So that 4 goes in the next space. And then lastly, multiply the 7 on the bottom by the 8 in the top. That gives us 56. And since there's nothing else to multiply on the top, I can go ahead and put both of those digits down there. Now, the next digit over is actually a 0, which means I need to multiply everything in the top by 0 but as you probably guessed that's kind of a futile exercise everything I multiply is going to give me 0 so if I were to do it and line those up 0 times 7 0 times 0 0 times 8 basically I just get a bunch of zeros so if you want to put them there that's fine but then we add up all of these decimal places from the right to the left that's the way that we add the 5 is the only thing in this column the 3 and the 9 add up to 12, carrying the 1. The 1 and the 4 add up to 5. The 4 and the 6 add up to 10, so 0 carry the 1. And the 1 and the 5 gives me another 6. So, in a sense, I'm through with the problem almost. Uh, so far, like I said, we've completely ignored those decimals. But now I need to look back and I need to have the same number of decimal places in my answer that I had in my question. So in the question I had one decimal place here and I had two decimal places in the bottom. So one decimal place in the top, two decimal places in the bottom for a total of three decimal places. That means my answer needs to have three decimal places. So I need to move this decimal, which we would normally put at the back, I need to move it one, two, three times to out here. So our final answer would be 60.5 decimal.
two, five. We ignored the decimals until the very last step. Just don't forget to go back and figure out where the decimal goes.